Today, we're diving into two crucial concepts in disaster recovery, RTO and RPO. Understanding these will help you plan for IT failures and minimize business disruptions. So, let's get started. First up, let's talk about RPO, or Recovery Point Objective. RPO determines how much data loss is acceptable during a disaster. It's measured as the time between your last backup and the moment disaster strikes. For example, if your RPO is one hour, you're prepared to lose up to one hour of data. But if your business needs real-time data availability, you'll need frequent backups or replication, which can be costly. Next, we have RTO, or Recovery Time Objective. RTO is the maximum amount of downtime your organization can tolerate after a disaster. Simply put, it's the time between a failure and when your critical systems are back online. The faster you recover, the lower the impact on your business. But keep in mind, a shorter RTO often means higher costs, as you'll need robust disaster recovery solutions. So, your RTO should align with your budget and business needs. Now, how do RTO and RPO work together in disaster recovery? When a system failure happens, your RPO determines how much data you'll lose, while your RTO defines how quickly your systems must be restored. Ideally, you want both values to be as low as possible without exceeding your budget. Then, learn how RTO and RPO work using a real-world scenario. Imagine we have a backup solution where backups are taken every three hours. The first backup is taken at 1 a.m., the second at 4 a.m., and the next one is scheduled for 7 a.m. However, the system fails at 5 a.m. In this situation, the latest available backup is from 4 a.m., which we can restore. However, any data created between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. is lost. According to this scenario, our maximum data loss, RPO, is 3 hours. After the failure, we need to start the recovery process. In this example, the time required to complete the recovery process, RTO, is 4 hours. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.